So annoying. I swear, if one more person comes up to me and asks how my Monday's going, I'm gonna tell them what I told everyone else. It's going okay so far. It's a little better now that it's got some tech news in it. AMD today revealed what they're calling Radeon Instinct, a family of GPU accelerator cards aimed at high-performance deep learning, machine learning, and neural networking applications. That sounds cool, but it's not super helpful for the common PC gamer, except that one of these Instinct cards is built on Vega, AMD's next big graphics architecture. Three cards were shown off, the MI6, which runs a Polaris GPU, the MI8, which actually runs Fiji, the same chip found in the Radeon R9 Fury and Nano cards, and the MI25 Vega, which runs Hawaii, I think. Nope. Nope, uh, it's Vega. It runs Vega. It should be noted that these are passively cooled cards because they're meant for server racks that have their own cooling. But AMD did give us a tease at Vega's gaming capability. They were showing off a demo of Doom running at 4K on the Vulkan graphics API, hitting upwards of 70 FPS. But the gaming version of the card was so secretive, AMD had to tape up the rear I.O. Dang, Vega, don't be shy now. Show your stuff. Well, hopefully we'll get a closer look after CES in January. More Radeon news today, as some tinkerers at overclocking.guide, a hardware enthusiast website, managed to unlock 128 more stream processors on the RX 460, gaining 12.5% more performance. The trick works by replacing the card's BIOS with a modified version. The only cards that have been tested so far are the Sapphire Nitro 4G and the Asus Strix 04G, but the modders are looking to publish BIOSes for more RX 460 variants soon. Now, if you have a 460 and decide to do this, be aware that you might not see any performance boost at all, and it might even brick your card. But, if you like to live on the wild side, check out the news sources in the description. Just don't mention us. You were never here. The PS4 Pro is supposed to add something extra to the PS4 experience, but Sony's promise has been that regular PS4 content will be unaffected. However, the brilliant folks at Digital Foundry have done an analysis and comparison between the regular PS4 and PS4 Pro versions of The Last Guardian, and have noted that on a standard PS4, the game will run anywhere between 20 to 30 FPS with stuttering at times. Meanwhile, the PS4 Pro version offers a constant 30 FPS at 1080p, with some frame dips when running at higher resolutions. Ars Technica also notes that Nintendo 3DS titles like Pokemon Sun and Moon and Hyrule Warriors both featured notable performance differences between the original hardware and the new 3DS version launched last year. Now, one of the main reasons to play on a console as opposed to a PC is the simplicity of not having to deal with changing minimum requirements and upgrading your hardware. So what will console users do in response to the increasing PCification of their gaming boxes? Maybe buy a PC. It's time for Quark Bits! A number of features we previously talked about on Netlinked are rolling out today. Microsoft's Xbox app for streaming Xbox One games to Oculus Rift. Instagram is rolling out live stories and taking on Snapchat head-on. And Facebook is rolling out 360-degree live streams. Google has finally brought its Gboard mobile keyboard to Android after it enjoyed six months of exclusivity on iOS. So now the rest of us can Google search and do loads of other stuff from within other apps as well. iOS thinks they're so fancy, we knew it was coming. Niantic Labs is adding new Pokemon to Pokemon Go today, starting with Pichu, Togepi, and a limited edition Pikachu wearing a Santa hat. Dominate your enemies with more cuteness. And Twitch could use some of those new Radeon Instinct GPUs we mentioned earlier because it's added AutoMod, a new system that uses deep learning to moderate a stream's chat. News sources for all of today's stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. Snickerdoodles! I worked it in. I, I had to do that because I forgot. Well, we thought we put the QR code in on Friday. <sighs> but it wasn't there. Anyways. It's in today. Now you might be wondering, what is this strange garment I'm wearing on my body here today? Well, let me tell you. It's part of NCIX's new line of in-house clothing. It's called NX Fusion, and it offers a collection of comfortable and stylish clothing that tech enthusiasts can throw on while also making a statement about your passion for all things geek. Now today is actually the big launch day for this. We're setting it live, and in honor of that, the first 10 people to purchase something from NX Fusion can get 10% off. Just click the link in the corner there and use promo code NXFusion to redeem that offer. 
And once you do click through, if you do, don't be alarmed. They made me do those poses. I don't hang out like that normally. Or do I? And are those all candid? I guess we'll never know. All right, well, that is Netlink Daily. The end of it, that is. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for the previous video in Netlink and check us out on Twitter over here. Our handles are there. But as always, like the video if you liked it. Comment below for fans with benefits and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. I'll see you in the next episode. Well, not the very next one, but in a future episode. You can be sure I'll be on another episode here on NCX Detectives. Gotta go!